Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And today, we're gonna to talk about thermal linkage. All right, this is the episode I've been waiting for, thermal linkage. What, what is that? What exactly is thermal linkage? Thermal linkage would be literally the thermal connection from whatever heat source to the target destination. So just as an example here, if we had our soldering iron and our target was a joint, oh, that is so cool. I never realized this stuff until it happens. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> so the, the actual heat source, your soldering iron, uh, and the actual target joint itself. We're talking about the thermal linkage between those two items, the actual heat transferring from your soldering tip into the solder on your board. That is the thermal linkage we're talking about today. Okay, so that's thermal linkage, right? That's all I need to know, that the soldering iron and the board, they connect and you know it melts and everything is good to go. Well, no, calm down. That's not everything you need to know. There's a little bit more, and once I tell you this next thing, it's gonna completely unlock an entire new level of being able to do soldering. Okay, I'm telling you right now, especially if you're new. If you're new and you're having trouble right now getting solder to melt, this is going to change a lot of stuff for you. Okay, so if we took thermal linkage, which we now know is the, the soldering iron itself connecting to the joint and transferring heat through it. Okay, if we take that knowledge and then we add one more thing. Okay, I want you to add one term. And if you're a techie, you probably already know the term bandwidth. It's that simple. Take bandwidth, add it to the equation, and you're gonna understand 10 times more about thermal linkage. Why? Because it directly has physical characteristics that completely apply to this situation. I'm gonna jump in the microscope now, we're gonna take a look at it and I'm gonna show you. All right, before I show you this, one really important thing to note here, okay? If you have a decent station, then when you put it at a specific temperature, that is what the tip is gonna be. Okay, it's it's not that you know anybody's lying to you. Okay, nobody's lying and saying that you know your your one tip is not going to be as hot as another tip. Okay, everything comes down to thermal linkage. Okay, every single one of these are capable of putting out a certain amount of heat. It's just how much of that heat can be delivered to the board properly and effectively. Okay, so now I'm going to show you two different tips here. Look at that two different size tips. Let's see if we can get a better picture there. All right, we got two different size tips here. In your head right now, which one of these, based on your new knowledge of thermal linkage, being that it is the bandwidth that's gonna allow you to transfer that thermal energy from the soldering tip to the board, which one of these do you believe is gonna be able to put more power out at the tip? Okay. it's. It's definitely not going to be this little micro pencil here. Oh yeah, I think we're talking about bottoms. These right here, this bottom one right here. That one's going to put out way more. Why? It's going to be able to create a better thermal link. All right, all right. I get it, Justin. I get what you're trying to say. You're trying to tell me that the bigger tip is going to allow more power to be delivered to the target joint. Okay. So that's all I need to know. I'm good to go. Were we done here? Nope. Not quite. Did you know that there's actually ways to increase the thermal linkage right off the bat? And it's very, very simple, okay? I'm sure you guys have seen me use this before. Boom, tip tinner, okay? Tip tinner is a very, very easy way to actually increase the thermal linkage from the soldering tip itself to the board, okay? Now, why is that? Why is it that if I take my tip tinner here and I get it all nice and tinned and everything like that, that it's gonna allow me to have better thermal linkage. How is it gonna allow you to make a better thermal connection to the board to allow all that heat and that power to transfer from the tip to the board better than any other way? It's a simple, simple answer. Remove the resistance. What? Remove what resistance? The, the resistance would be dirt, grime, and oxidation, okay? 
Anytime these things come in contact with your soldering work, you're going to have problems. Okay, and I've been preaching this for a long time. You know, every time I make that joke about using your flux, I'm not kidding. It's a big deal. Okay, so first and foremost, we need to make sure that we're always using our flux. That is a given all the time, every time. Flux, flux, flux. Okay, so flux, what's that do? Real quick, we know it cleans up the joint and provides a barrier that the that prevents oxidation from occurring so that you can get good thermal linkage okay now here's another thing this one's crazy did you know that like materials want to they want to be together like materials want to be together so if we take the knowledge of using a clean joint i.e. using flux plus using a tipped tip on your solder like you know tin in your tip here which removes the oxidation We've got the perfect environment for proper thermal linkage. That means that both your, your actual target joint itself and the soldering iron are going to be free of debris. So if they're free of debris and you've got wet solder at the end of your soldering iron, they're just going to come together. Okay, That coupled with the knowledge that you know the bandwidth is in the tip itself, oh man, the game's been changed. I dare you to try it out yourself. We should try it out right now. All right, so we're in the microscope. We've got ourselves a nice big old thermal mass joint that's got tons of solder all in it, and we're gonna melt this thing. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna create some thermal linkage today. So, the steps. What were the steps, Justin? Um, that's right. Clean off your tip. So let's go ahead and get that nice and tinned. We got our flux down here. Let's see what we can do. Just gonna poke it. Well, nothing's happening, man. You said use flux and tin your tip. Oh, the bandwidth. This is a micro pencil. It's not gonna do the job. Okay, it's not gonna do the job at all. You see that? You see the little points in there? Okay. So let's go ahead and hot swap over, and let's take another tip. And let's increase the bandwidth. All right, so we're heating up. We're almost at temperature. We are removing the oxidation from the tip. We're going to tin it. All right, we've got more bandwidth now, so we should be able to do this. I'm just going to take the tip and I'm going to push it down into it. Oh, look at that. While it still took a little bit of energy there to get going, you can see that we now have more thermal linkage. And the thermal linkage I'm talking about, look, it looks like it's one one thing there. It's all together. Move it down. You can see the heat traveling. Because we're thermally linked right now. Look at that. Still thermally linked. There's a direct molecular connection from the solder to the soldering tip that is allowing all that energy to transfer into the trace. Okay, let's switch back to the other one again. Great use for your ceramic tweezers, by the way. Okay, so we're back on the small one. Let's try it one more time. Should still have enough flux there to make something happen, but let's add a little bit more, just to make it fair. All right, so we poke it. All that flux, no big deal. Everything's cleaned, everything's tinned. Oh man, barely getting started. Okay, so let's increase the bandwidth. Let's turn it to the side. There's more there, right? Oh, look at that. We created more thermal linkage. More heat is being transferred through, and we were able to wet the joint. There you go. Thermal linkage. Don't forget, guys, if you're interested in any of the tools I use, check out the description below. I even have my own custom tools that I sell down there as well that literally do not exist anywhere else on the planet except from the art of repair. I also have a Patreon where you can help support the channel so I can create even better high-quality content.